In this lesson, we're going to talk about the customary system. The customary system is the system that we use to measure things in the United States. If you look over here off to the right, you will see the units of length, and that is what we will begin with. Now, these will usually be provided on tests or inside the question as hints. However, it's better to just start memorizing them now. So, 12 inches is equivalent to one foot. Three feet are, is one yard. 5,280 feet equals one mile, and 1,760 yards equals one mile. So just to summarize, a foot is bigger than an inch, a yard is bigger than a foot, and a mile is both bigger than uh, both feet and yards. When converting from larger units to smaller units, we must multiply by by a number and when converting from smaller units to larger units we must divide so let's look at what that means I have two problems here three yards equals how many feet and four or 24 feet equals how many yards well since yards are bigger than feet we have to multiply okay so let's go over to the right side over here and we find that there are three feet in each yard. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our th three yards multiplied by our three feet to get the answer of nine. So there are nine feet in three yards. Now we're going to do the reverse for the next problem. We have 24 feet equals how many yards? Well, since feet are smaller here, and we're converting to a larger one, we want to use division. So we're going to take 24 divided by three. Okay, when we do that, we get the answer of eight. So, just to put that in the actual problem, three yards equals nine feet, and 24 feet equals eight yards. Now we have the problem, 18 feet equals how many inches? Well, to start off, what we wanna do is we wanna look over here again to our side, to our right side where it says how many inches are in a foot so we have 12 so what we want to do since feet are bigger than inches we we want to multiply so we're going to take 18 times 12 over here okay for me the easiest way for me to do problems like this is using the distributive property I take 18 times 10 to give me 180 plus 18 times 2. 18 times 2 is 36. And I just add those together. When I do that, I get the answer of 216. So in 18 feet, there are 216 inches. Now if you did this problem with the multiplication way, you would get the same answer of 216. What happens when you get a problem that looks like this? We have 15 yards, 6 feet equals how many feet? Well, if we notice right away, we already have feet in here. We have 6 of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to convert this portion into feet and add the 6 to it. So again, I'm converting from yards to feet, so I need to multiply. So I'm taking 15 times 3, because there are 3 feet in each yard, to give me 45. Now the second step is taking the 45 plus six to give me 51. So right here, this is 51 feet. So 15 yards and six feet equals 51 feet. Let's move on to the customary system using the units of weight. Now there are really only three different units of weight. We have ounces, pounds, and tons. Uh, it's important to right away know the difference that this, these ounces are not fluid ounces. These are just ounces in weight. All right, so there are 16 ounces in one pound and there are 2,000 pounds in one ton. So now we're going to do some conversions. Just like last time, when you're converting from pounds to tons, you're converting a smaller uh, unit into a larger unit. So here we're going to use division. When we do this, 
we know that there's 2,000 pounds in a ton, so we take 6,000, divide it by 2,000. And if you can recall, when you have zeros in division, you can cancel out each zero that matches up. So now we get 16 divided by 2, which is 8. So in this problem, 16,000 pounds equals 8 tons. Now when we're doing the reversal of that, we are going to be uh, multiplying. So now we have 3 tons, sorry, let me change that color, 3 tons times 2,000 pounds, because in each ton there are 2,000 pounds. And when you do that, you know that you can multiply the non-zero digits first to get 6, and just add your zeros. So this one, you get 6,000 pounds, so 3 tons equals 6,000 pounds. When converting from ounces to pounds, it becomes a little bit more challenging because you're dealing with 16. So when you're going from ounces to pounds, you want to divide. So you're taking 64 divided by 16. All right, some of you may be able to do this in your head. If you can't, you can always just do your multiples of 16. And if you count by 16s, so you get 16, 32, okay? If you uh, keep going, you get 48, and then 64. So you can see that it goes in one, two, three, four times. So my answer is four pounds. When I'm going the opposite way, you want to say eight pounds, you're going to be multiplying 16 times eight because there are 16 ounces in. And again, just like last time, I'll use the distributive property. I know that 10 times eight is 80, and six times eight is 48. And when I add those together, I get 128. So 128 ounces in eight pounds. When comparing two different units, you have to, it's just like fractions, you, you want to make sure that they look the same before you compare. Alright, so well, first one we have 33 ounces and then we have 2 pounds. Now you have two options, you can convert these to both to ounces or you can convert them both to pounds. I'm going to convert them both to ounces because I think that might be the easier way in this problem. So to do that, I'm going to take the pounds and I'm going to multiply by 16 because there are 16 ounces in a pound. When I do that, I get 32 ounces. Now it's clear that 33 ounces is greater than 32 ounces. Okay, same thing here. With the tons, I'm going to convert the tons to pounds because I think that's easier. So 2 times 2,000. I know 2 times 2 is 4, and then I just add the zeros. So I have 4,000 pounds is less than 4,500 pounds. So when comparing 2 different units. First convert them and then compare. And now finally we're going to talk about the units of capacity. Now units of capacity is probably the most difficult one because it's one we're not quite used to and sometimes we get confused. Alright so in units of capacity we have one gallon equals four quarts. One quart equals two pints, one pint equals two cups, one cup equals eight fluid ounces, much different than regular ounces, okay? But I think we've all seen the, the big G method, and so I'm just going to quickly go over the big G method. So what is that we have our gallon, as you can see here, our gallon. Inside that gallon, we have our four quarts. We represent them through the Q. Okay, each quart, two pints. So now you can start to see that inside a gallon, there are eight pints, okay? And last but not least, in each pint, okay, so there are two cups in each pint. So now, when you look through this, if you're asked a question such as, um, how many cups are in a quart? Well, you go here, you count one, two, three, four. So there are four cups in one quart, which means there are 16 cups in a gallon, okay? There are eight pints in a gallon. Um, there are two quarts and a half gallon. So each one of these C's is worth 16 fluid ounces. So that means a pint is worth 16 ounces and a quart is worth 32 ounces. And then that would mean a gallon is worth 128 ounces. So using this little method 
the, the big G man, as, as some people refer to it as, um, using this method can sometimes help you. You can draw this out on a, on a test off to the side really quickly, as long as you remember that there's a big G with four Q's in it, and each Q there are two P's, and each P there are two C's. Okay, now let's talk conversions here. So what we're going to do is we're going to remember last time that we, we have our gallons and our cups, and inside the gallon we had 16 cups. So, or, yeah, and so if we're doing five gallons, what we want to do in this problem is take 16 times five, okay? So again, here's one of my little, little cheats. When you're multiplying something by five and it's not easy to do, I multiply it by 10 and then cut it in half. So 16 times 10 is 160. Divided by two is 80. So that's where I get my 80 cups here, all right? Now we're going from pints to quarts, okay? So each, if you look off to the right again, each pint is worth two cups, but each, sorry, that didn't really help you there. Each quart has two pints in it. So let's, th let's think about this. Are we going to multiply or divide? Since the pint is smaller, we're going to have to divide here, okay? Because there are two pints for every quart. So we're going to take the 36, and we're gonna divide it by two to give us 18 quarts. And finally, we're looking at a problem like this. 48 fluid ounces equals how many cups? Let's look over here. Eight fluid ounces equals one cup. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take 48 and we are going to divide that by eight to get our six cups, okay? One thing I want you to remember is sometimes it may take multiple conversions, all right? Like in the first problem, we could convert gallons to quarts and then quarts to pints and then finally pints to cups. And that's okay. Sometimes it takes multiple um, conversions and multiple steps, just like when you convert maybe uh, inches to miles. First, you want to find out how many feet are in a mile and then go from there for how many uh, inches are in a foot. So sometimes you have to convert multiple times and do multiple steps in order to solve a problem. And that's the customary system.